How does not get our head? Okay, hey, here's what we're doing today. Uh, we're on section um, 4344. Um, 4344 is still dealing with trig functions. Um, we're not going to get away from them. Basically, what we're going to learn is a couple more different properties of Boltzmann today. Um, we're going to basically cover how how can you how can you possibly find the exact value of a of a random angle given to you for a trig function. Um, we're going to do a couple examples of what your homework is going to look like today. So we'll do a couple of homework examples. Oops, uh, homework examples, and then we'll talk about kind of what we're going to go into, um, and then I'm going to get you started on that because it, it, it will not take you the entire class. You probably, if you have a calculator, it'll be done really short. They're very, very straightforward problems. They want you to find a single number that's missing on paper. That's it. Very, very straightforward. Uh, but I do want to introduce a new property today. So we got some properties when we have obtuse angles. We're going to just deal with the two singles. We'll eventually, uh, we'll eventually deal with what happens when you have uh, reflex angles, angles that are past 180. Obtuse is from 90 and up to 180. So that's what, um, that's what two singles. So that's what we're going to look at today. Um, all right, well, let's do an example or two of what your homework will look like. We'll do a couple examples of properties, and I'll let you kind of work today. Um, so homework problems. So let's say, this is going to seem silly, it's kind of the weird examples we did yesterday. Uh, imagine that you're in a hot air balloon. So here's my little car for the hot air balloon. Um, there's my balloon itself. Got a little star on it. There you go. And we got a little rope attached to your hot air balloon. Okay. There you go. Alright. And let's say we want to know how high you are, you are up in the air. So the altitude of the hot air balloon. Let's say that that was the number we're seeking to find. Um, the thing we know, we know how long the rope is. That was a given. We know the rope. The rope, let's say, is 60. Uh, let's go 60 feet. That'll work. So 60 feet. So we're not that high. I mean, it's a 60 foot rope. So that should be the longest, you know, the longest side of that triangle. If you can see the skeleton of the triangle there. And all we need to know is the angle. Now, what we talked about yesterday. It is possible to find the, the actual angles on ground level looking up. What we call those angles, these angles here, this is called an angle of elevation. So it's an angle of elevation. It's looking up. Uh, I've heard it referred to as an angle of ascension, look, looking up, upwards. Um, how we talked about yesterday is that you can use a cell phone to do that. I don't know if like you were gone, you were just weren't paying attention. Um, iPhones or Android phones have the same uh, kind of basic concept. You have a compass app on your phone. Hopefully it works, but um, the compass app you know points north. But what a lot of people don't know is if you just swipe to the side. It gives you a level, and the level works if you place it on the ground and you actually tap on the screen, it levels back to zero. Okay, so it'll turn the green, the, the screen will turn green, and so it'll say zero degrees on the screen, and when you just tilt it, it'll tell you the angle that you're at. Well, all you have to do is if you place it on the ground, you level it, and just hold it against the rope, or just put it right on the rope itself. Just balance it there. It'll tell you the angle of the rope. Let's say the angle is 40 degrees. So that's a 40 degree angle, because you just you can just place your cell phone right here on that angle, just hold it right on the rope, and it tells you the angle that you're that you're at. So now we can find the now we can find the, the height of the uh, the altitude of the hot air balloon. So all we need is one of the trig functions. Um, this is where you have to identify like what the sides are. So let me draw the skeleton of the triangle that we're dealing with. This is basically it. We want to find this number. We have the 40 degrees, and we have the 60 feet. Okay, that's basically the outline of what we're doing here. Okay, in the book, they're going to give you the pictures like this. There's only think, one time that they don't. You have to draw it yourself. All right, so let's talk about the actual walls here so we can figure out which trick function. So here's my angle. They're telling me the angle I'm working with. So what are the walls called? Like, what is the 60 called? Hypotenuse, right? That should be the biggest side. How we know that? It's always across from the knife. X is opposite. X is the opposite wall. It's the one across. And then the adjacent wall, we're not even using. There's nothing there. We're not even using it. It's the 
those smaller walls next to the 40. All right, so we're definitely using ops and hypotenuse. Those are the numbers we're kind of using. So if we think about the actual trig functions, SOCATELA, which one of the three acronyms has the opposite and hypotenuse in the name? Sign. Yeah, the sign, right? The so part. This is the one we're using because it has the letters O and H in it. That's the idea. So sine of your angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. That's the formula that they're actually telling me. Now the angle, it's always the trig function with the angle behind it. That's how it always works. Um, the opposite is the wall we don't know. We do know the hypotenuse, which is the 60 that we made up. 60. Now, how would I solve that? Yeah, multiply the 60 across. So we're going to multiply the 60 to the other side here. So 60, 60 feet times the sine of 40. And hopefully your calculator's in degree mode, and this will give you the opposite wall, which is the exact wall we need. Um, the label, what's my label going to be? Feet. Because that's what we use on the row itself. So it's Okay, but I need the number. Um, say it again. 38.57. Five, seven. That makes sense. It's got to be small. Um, 40 degrees is the smallest angle in the triangle. So the opposite wall of that should be the smallest wall. So 30, yeah, 38. So I'm going to try right. The adjacent wall would be actually bigger than that. All right. Make sense, like what you're doing? You only have a couple of those. Now, here's my question to you. Do you want another kind of random story problem that I just kind of make up, or are you good? good. All right, I figured. All right. Okay, um, so let's talk about the actual properties today. So this is something we're going to eventually go into, and we're going to eventually apply story problems like this to the new properties. Because we haven't really had to deal with the two singles. All the angles we've dealt with are you no know, very easy. You know. 30 degrees, 40 degrees, you know, the special triangles, which go up to 60, you know, that type of thing. But what happens when you need to do a picture and there's a 150 degree angle? Like, how do you even attempt to do that? Uh, that type of thing. That's what I want to discuss. I want to discuss, like, how do you know the exact angle without a calculator? Or the exact number without a calculator? Okay, so, let's get rid of this here. We're just going to probably just do two of these, just to make sure it makes sense to you. Oh, we'll stick with kind of smaller angles. So let's say I want to find the exact value of the sine of 150 degrees without the need of a calculator. So this is like a perfect math test uh, question, ACT question. Um, it's something that's inherently simple if you know the process for doing it. Um, so 150 degrees, where that, uh, where is that angle actually drawn if you're to draw it? Say it again? Say. 30 degrees off of a straight line. It's in quadrant number two. So um, this is, you know, quadrant number one. Uh, we open up counterclockwise. This is where it would be. That's 150 degrees. And you're absolutely right. That is 30 degrees off from a straight line. Straight line is 180. That's the triangle you're dealing with. It's actually a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Because this is your 150 degrees. It actually makes the triangle in the second quadrant. And so um, let me actually draw that triangle a little bit bigger than that. So this is the 30, and I'm, all I'm doing is I just zoomed in on this. And so this is 60. And on the special triangle, this is the, the triangles we were using the other day in the homework, the page 498. What was the wall opposite of 30? One. Okay. What was the side opposite of 60? Square root of 2. Square root of 3. three. And the side opposite of 90? Square root of 3. Square root of 2. Just 2. Just 2. Yeah, 2. Um, these are ones that you'll get used to. We'll, we'll start dealing with them more and more. We'll put them on the board a lot just so you get kind of used to it. Um, now, if, if this is correct, like that triangle, which is this one right here, you have to think about what are the actual numbers, because I'm in the second quadrant. So when I go this direction in the second quadrant, what type of number is that? Negative. That's a negative number. If I go up, what type of number is that? That's positive. And this diagonal will always be positive. The hypotenuse is always positive, right after ever. Always positive. The distance, right? 
And now all we need to do is rattle off the sine of 150. Well, the sine of 150 is, it's the sine of this angle. Doing 150 degrees in the calculator, it's the same exact angle as doing the 30, because you're 30 off from a straight line. So the angle that you'll always deal with is the, the angle that's always touching the origin. Okay, so the 30 degrees is the same value as that. So the sine of 150 is the sine of 130, or is the sine of 30 degrees. These are the same thing. So let's read off what the sine is. So sine stands for, uh, for so and so katoa. So what is the opposite wall of the sine? Say it. Heard it? 1. 1 over, what's the hypotenuse? 2. Two. That's what your calculator would tell you, without the need of calculator. It would tell you half. That's the exact value of 150. Make sense? Did it give you that? 25. What is the value of 150? Isn't the value of 150 150? No, the sine of 150. Okay. Sine of 150 is half. So if you're trying to figure out the exact trig value without using a calculator, it would actually tell you half on the screen. If you were to actually use it. And they always use sine, you don't need the other like cosine. Or it could be any of them. They'll tell you exactly what trig function to use. Okay. So, for instance, um, Let's say we're doing um, 135, we're doing cosine, let's say, okay? So, so the cosine of 135, right? It's kind of a random number. We're in the second quadrant, so we can actually draw that. So we can go this way, 135 would be somewhere over here. 135 degrees, it's off from a straight line, like what Cassie said earlier, by 45 degrees. Like it's off perfectly 45 degrees. So what type of triangle is that? 45, 45, yeah, so 45, 45, 90. So 45, 45, 90, if I zoom in here. And now I can fill in those numbers. You know, the numbers for 45, 45, 90 is one, one, root two. Now, if we're in the second quadrant, what is this number though? Negative. Negative, yeah. And then the number going up is positive, and the diagonal is always positive. So now I can read off what the cosine would be for the 45, because the 45 is the angle that actually touches the origin. So that, that would be the same thing. So <coughs> these would actually give you the same value on a calculator, but you just have to make sure you put it in the negative sign, because you're in the second quadrant. When they give you the answer for the sign, do you want it as a fraction? Yeah, the point fraction, fraction. fraction. Yep. So I want the, like, the exact value. So when we do the cosine of 45 right here, this is the, the angle I'm dealing with. Cosine stands for ka. So that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So what's the adjacent wall of the 45 degrees? Negative 1 over root 2. So the actual value here is negative 1 over root 2, which is, if you multiply the top and bottom over root 2, it's root 2 over 2. It's, that's a decimal, but I mean, that's the exact value without using a calculator. And it'll be negative because you're, um, that's the value that you're dealing with. It's a negative over. Okay, questions with what we're going to be eventually going into. That's something that, obviously right now, we haven't done a lot of that. We're going to practice that more like to, so you can be very, very comfortable with that so you will not need a calculator, especially in like a mass test or anything like that. That's what we're going to be working on the next couple days in here. I'll, I'll give you a bunch of random angles. We'll really work on the actual triangles themselves, worry about which numbers are positive and negative. So everyone got kind of an idea what we're going into? It still is the exact same math we were just doing, right? The triangles, it's still, you can do straight problems with these. Um, just the same thing, you know, with that airplane problem or the hot air balloon problem today. Um, you can still apply the exact same mathematics to it. You just do Sokotoa, solve out for whatever side of the thing or whatever fraction it is. Okay? All right, here's your homework today. The homework that I'm going to give you, uh, this is due on Thursday. You have 30 minutes, or a little bit, like 25. You'll be done before you leave here today, if you're actually working on it, because it's, it's just doing trade functions for simple story So here you go. Page 499, 53 through 60, and number 67. It's find a single number, find an X. What? Around, you can sit wherever you like. The pictures are drawn for you. Solve. It's pretty easy. Uh, are you kidding me? Yes. Oh, 
was your final part of our previous year? Yeah.